When President Obama was re-elected in last November, I sent a letter of congratulation. And in his reply, a few weeks ago, he underlined the good relations uh, between the United States and Austria. And he gave a very positive outlook for the further development of these relations in the next four years. I, I very much agree to that uh, opinion and to that outlook. And I think we have a very solid basis for that. 175 years of history is not a young friendship, it is a very long historical relation. 1838 means that Emperor Franz Josef was a boy of eight years uh, in these days. It uh, means uh, that uh, Many, many famous uh, statesmen and politicians who worked on the foundation of the Austrian Republic in 1918 were not even born when these relations started. And uh, I personally, born 19, 1938, 100 years later, by the way, uh, can present to you some personal remarks and personal observation of one third of this 175 years. I mean that uh, when I started school, in the first classes of my school, the war was just ended, and one of the lasting impressions for a child of these days was American help was the letters U-S-A, was uh, the, the parcels, care parcels, with uh, exotic content of, of goods and, and uh, fruits and chewing gum and chocolate and uh, peanuts and uh, uh, not in the sense that are only peanuts, but real peanuts. <laughs> And, and many other things uh, that made a very great uh, impression on me. You, you, won't, uh, you will be surprised, but I, I ate my first banana in 1954. And my daughter is very impressed if I tell her that I was uh, 16 years old when, when I got the first banana to eat uh, in, in connection with the economic relations after World War II. So this, this memory and the, and the fact that uh, I, I got uh, food from the United States in my grammar school in Steinlechnergasse in Hitzing, uh, you cannot forget. This is part of my, my memory and of my thinking. Uh, in 1952, my father went uh, to the United States as a civil servant, negotiating uh, some agreement uh, between Austria and United States, and he brought me as a great present a RCA radio. It was my first radio. And my favorite radio station was BDN, Blue Danube Network, serving the United States forces in Austria. And uh, it's hillbilly jubilee time, or it's time for rise and shine, and other th things were, were uh, the reason why I became and still am a fan of jazz music, of good American jazz music, folk music, Louis Armstrong and many other things I learned to know. And in my school, I was known as an expert for jazz. And this, uh, <laughs> this was uh, a prestigious uh, role I had to <laughs> fulfill. And still it is something I, I never lost. Uh, the State Treaty of Austria, now we come to even more serious elements of the American-Austrian relations. Uh, I also remember very well, and uh, 
It was John Foster Dulles who was representing the United States uh, at this occasion. The picture of the state treaty is in the foreign office, a copy, but even in the presidential office. Uh, we in the presidential have the tables where this treaty was signed. So we have a very close relation, of course, to this state treaty as the basis of modern Austria. And uh, again, the United States played an important role. And, and uh, it was the Soviet Union on the one side. They wanted to make a modification vis-a-vis -vis the burden of the policy of Stalin to show a new policy after Stalin passed away in March or April 53. But the role of, of the United States and of Dulles and others was crucial to, to come to an agreement. And uh, it also is part of our relations as well in the year 56, the Hungarian Revolution, when Vice President Nixon came to Austria and came to Burgenland and was addressing the Austrian people and really uh, very positive uh, and, and uh, honoring uh, the behavior of Austria vis-a-vis -vis the refugees and vis-a-vis -vis the events in Hungary. Uh, another element and 61, uh, the meeting of uh, Khrushchev and Kennedy in Vienna and you Mr. Ambassador, you can show your guests uh, in your residence uh, who was standing where and who was sitting where and who was greeting whom and who was talking to whom. Uh, this is part of your memory, but uh, also our uh, memory to the early 60s. Uh, a very great influence of, on my picture of the United States and, of course, uh, on my judgment on the American democracy was when Ambassador Riedelberger uh, extended to me an invitation to one of the programs you have just mentioned. Uh, it was uh, an institute in Washington, Governmental Affairs Institute, and a gentleman with the name Albert Keo was taking care of me when I arrived in, in Washington. And it was, it was an in, incredible, incredible impression for me. He took me to a, a big map of the United States, much bigger than this here, twice as big. And he said, you know, this is a map of the United States. We are now here in Washington. And what do you want to see? Where do you want to go? <laughs> what, what, is, what is of interest for you? It's wow. my great, great pleasure and honor to hand you over these uh, documents uh, to wow. keep your memory on this 175th birthday of uh, American-Austrian relations. Thank you very much.